Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly update of Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And things have continued on quite well from last week. We've got steel production up and running so we've got um, over here somewhere we've got steel being produced on the uh, on, in, in the smeltery area. So steel is interesting. In in uh, Crastorio 2 it requires you to cook it with uh, coke as well as, as well as putting in a load of iron so that's a little bit of a difference. Yeah so this requires both iron and coke and you cook it, cook it in a furnace that's, that's not too bad. Um, and to make coke, you need to cook wood and coal together. So it's sort of basically it's making charcoal. You're essentially burning the two of them together, driving out all of the um, all of the water and so on, just makes it really, really pure carbon that you can then burn to very high temperature in order to get, and, uh, get some of the carbon into the steel, so you make into the iron to make steel. So it's fairly close to real life, I guess, really. So in order to get, keep this being running as efficiently as possible, we're feeding in three different things here. We've got the wood and the coal going in to, to, for the actual making of the coke, and then we're feeding in the refined processed fuel as well in order to get that 10% fuel boost that you get from turning turning coal or turning wood into, into this processed fuel. So it makes it a little bit more efficient, but it does make it a little bit complicated with the machines because technically they can burn any of these things as fuel, but we're trying to convince them to specifically use the, um, use the processed fuel. Down here, we're not being quite so fussy. These ones are just burning the coke as fuel, and then turning, and then and then bringing in the iron as well to, to cook that into. Um, let's go like that. There we go. To cook the iron in, into steel. And this is a three to one, which is I think slightly better. Than, I think vanilla, if I remember correctly, is five to one. Anyway, it's 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 not too bad a ratio. You, you put in 59 plates, get five steel plates out as well. Although you do require the coke as well. So. I built all. I built this up first with an additional row of um, furnaces down the bottom that were making the iron and direct inserting them into these furnaces. But uh, Mark decided that wasn't sufficiently that wasn't sufficiently efficient. So he's come in and he's put in some additional um, iron smelting up here, a couple of rows of it, and that's feeding down. Between them, they're feeding down to the um, to the uh, to the sm steel smelting down here, and also up onto the bus to get to, to, to carry on make, uh, processing that into into um, it, to carry on passing the iron down to be made into absolutely everything else. It's got dark. Let's deal with that. I don't feel remotely guilty about uh, about using console hacks for things like this because this is just for recording the video. I'll I'll have, um, I won't be saving this game anyway, so it, it'll be um, everything will be back to back to the way it should be for the uh, for the next stream. So yes, we're doing we're doing that over there. We're, um, we're that's making the steel, which Tristan then set up a system here to make that into beams to make make engines as well, which we're making. Slowly, but the it is it is gradually catching up, and then I was able to use that all of that stuff and some other stuff besides to make or make all the things you, nearly all the things you need for trains. So we've got rail being made down here. We've got the uh, locomotives, got the wagons, got the signals. Uh, stations are being made here off on the side because they're a bit of an afterthought because I kind of forgot about them, so I had to spaghetti them in where I could. And then up here, I'm making all the prerequisites for making fluid wagons. Um, not actually making the fluid wagons yet because I don't. Th think we've researched them unless we've researched them since I set this up. Yes, there's no fluid wagons researched yet, but once we do, this will be able to make them and dump them into this box. So we've got all the bits and pieces that are needed for rails here. Then we've got various ammunitions being made and, and, and medikits because we need we need those. And the medikits or the uh, what are these? The first aid kits aren't they? Yes, the little ones are the first aid kits, the bigger ones are medipacks. So the first aid kits are made using the creep, which is the stuff that you get when you when you take out a biter nest are there any visible? Oh, here we go. Here's some. This stuff here is left behind, and you can collect that using the creep collection tool, uh, which I can't I can't reach because it's way out of uh, out of re range. But you can either collect it using this tool, which you just drag across and it grabs it all, or you can place land, um, you can place stone or something over it as an, any any tiles down. And you'll collect it a little bit more efficiently, but it's much much slower. So this way, is just just dragging across the whole lot is far far easier. So you then we're then putting this in the chest down here, and that can be converted along with iron and and uh, wood can be made into the, into the uh, first aid kits, which which give you back 25 um, health whenever you use them, which is a, a good start. Um, I'm not sure how much health I have in total, but it's a lot more than 100, so it's not 25%. I've then also got a system up here for making the medi kits. I think Are these medi kits. Uh, med packs, which are essentially the same sort of thing as the uh, first aid kits, but they're twice as they do twice as much healing, so you can get 50 back from those. But they require fish as well. So my theory was, I'll set this system up like this, and then if you have any fish, do I have any fish? I don't have any fish. Oh, yes, I do. I've got some fish there. So you can then come along. You can put the fish in the box as well, and then it'll start making turning those fish into med packs, so you can have the slightly better ones and you can grab those out of here as they as as they're made. I've made walls, which are coming in useful. We've got an entire chest full of these because you get through walls in incredible quantities once you, once you start trying to do defensive stuff. And I've started upgrading everything to a tier two assembly machines as well, which is quite nice. So I um, I decided it was time if we come over here a bit. 
Let's work backwards for this bit because it shows how the axe shaving tends to go. So I decided it was time to start making the core mining drills because in the new version, 0.6 of space exploration, they only use 25 megawatts. And that's not too bad given that we have a total power capacity, generation capacity of almost 120 megawatts at the moment. And we're using about a third of it. So we should be able to shove in a couple of those. And I've been reliably informed by um, people in the in the comments section and on Discord that actually you, these things, the first one you put down on a planet, will produce enough pyroflux that you can use to boil water and feed into steam engines that actually they tend to be more or less power neutral. Of course then when you put on the second one you only get uh, you get slightly less of all of the outputs out of all of them so it's, it's not quite as effective for the, in the future but the first one at least will produce as much energy as it as it uses up. Um, and also then to pro once you've got the core fragments out with the uh, core mining drills you then need to use the pulverizers to, to strip them down turn them into all the different resources so if we have again have a look in here we can hopefully find uh, core fragments that's that one yep um, and then that you put it into a pulverizer and it gets turned into iron copper coal stone ch small chance a chance of uranium actually that's not a bad chance of uranium um, some raw metals crude oil mineral water water and pyroflux so there's a lot there's more stuff in here than there was in vanilla um, although I think the pyroflux essentially replaces the vulcanite uh, vanilla sorry in space exploration 0.5 it, it, it feels like vanilla for me to me because I've been playing it for the last two years <laughs> yeah so it replaces the vulcanite you would get in 0.5 with this pyroflux that you can then use for power the water and crude oil were there before the mineral water is new the raw material metals I believe that's a case two thing um, and I think the boost to uranium is very very interesting uh, we're gonna have to see how that goes also a lot more stone so well we shall see how the balance goes we'll uh, just try and prioritize the use of this stuff and then well we'll uh, as I say we'll see how it goes <clears throat> so you need the pulverizers to make and the uh, and the core mining drills in order to deal with uh, in, in order to do core mining properly and in order to get those up and running I needed the um, the concrete in order to make the because these are, these are bigger heavier buildings so they need massive quantities of concrete in order to build them and in order to make the concrete, we needed to do this recipe over here, where we take in the iron sticks, uh, stone bricks, sand and water, uh, or, or all the stuff that goes in here, and then we produce the concrete. So this is working nicely, but in order to get this working, I needed the tier 2 assembly machines so that I could have water input on them. The tier 1 assembly machines don't support feeding them with water, so... Yeah, had to start using, had to use the tier 2s, and that meant I had to make the tier 2s, so I set up this area, which is... Um, to start with, it's a kind of duplication of the assembly machine ones that are being made somewhere. They, I must have ripped them out already, actually, because they would be. I'm sure they were being made somewhere over here, but they seem to. Have, I, I, I can't see where where that was now. So maybe I've maybe I pulled those out because we're because we're now building them over here. And I'm leaving a little bit of space in here. I was going to build, start building assembly machine threes in here potentially. We'll see how that goes. I might find that they need all kinds of other stuff. Let's have a quick look, in fact. Oh, there's an assembly machine four as well, and a five if you count the space one, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, so this one requires, uh, okay, a lot of stuff. I don't know if we're going to be able to get this all in the same sort of in, in the same place. We might need to move, move it again in order to, to do that, because as you can see, assembly machine three requires assembly machine two, two requires one, one requires zero, and presumably four is going to require three and a load of other stuff as well. So this is, and yeah, so this is going to require a fair amount of, um, of rebuilding to just to move stuff along. But here as well, I've also made radars, as you can see by the fact there's one right here. Um, and this is really nice because it means I can now look out in the map view and we've got this whole area um, visible and an area up here as well. And it seems it means when I'm making these videos, I don't have to do quite as much running around. So that's a that's that's nice. That's very nice. And so over here, um, I've started making the mining drills over here as well. And that's again is another repetition of the ones that are being made or were yeah are being made over here so this is now this should probably be pulled up we should we should we should get rid of this because it's now it's, it's now unnecessary it's just it's just it's repeated elsewhere um because i need these in order to make the big mining drills and i'll also need them to make the mark ii mining drills and maybe the wide area mining drills and, and just generally more and more and more types of drills so these are always again Space Exploration Crestorio 2, you need the burner drills to make the Mark 1 drills, you need the Mark 1s to make the Mark 2s, you need the Mark 2s to make the Mark 3s, and so on. So it's important to have it all in the same place, and which is why it ends up getting moved around a bit at this stage of the game. Also started building the medium and large pylons, and again the mediums are made out of the small pylons, as is again as is tradition, um, and that means we can now start pushing out a bit more quickly and easily. And it, it it's a bit of a faff putting down the little pylons all over the place. You need so many of them, whereas when you start using the bigger ones, you can spread them out a bit further. It's all just a bit easier and a bit nicer. So I wanted to get these up and running as soon as I reasonably could. We don't have the substations yet, but I'm sure we will at some point. 
so yes I mentioned that I'd got um, all, all the train stuff being built so the next thing that's, that's been uh, that uh, people have been working on today and I say people because it's not me um, this, this was something that Tristan's been working on I believe so we've come up with an, an what I think is an interesting but somewhat weird um, system for the for the uh, for the trains so what we've decided to do rather than try we've, we've for one thing we have decided not to use LTN we are deli very deliberately not using LTN to give us a bit of an what we think is going to be an interesting challenge um, it may be absolutely horrible and we may regret this but we're going to give it a, a good shot and see how things go and I think mostly now because um, since Factorio version 1 0.9 I, I, I don't know I don't remember exactly when it happened but since they introduced the train limit option on, on station so you can control whether um, you, you can prevent multiple trains trying to go to a station as soon as it opens I think I've been thinking that doing a, a train system without using LTN should be possible and should shouldn't be too difficult. The only the, the thing there are a few things that um it makes it remo it makes harder. One is refueling, which I shall talk about in a moment. But the biggest one is prioritization. So because we're going to be using core mining fairly soon, we want to um, we want to prioritize all of the resources that are produced by the core miner to be used first because they're free, and if they back if they start to back up, then they will cause other resource generation to jam. So the priority is always going to be to use these ones first and that's quite important how we're going to do that i'm not quite sure yet i mean i have some ideas for mid late game ways of doing it with the um with the transmitters and receivers that you get however at this early stage i'm not sure we shall uh, so we'll have to have a good think about that and see what we can come up with but it's going to be it's definitely going to be interesting the other weird thing we've done with the trains is rather than picking a specific size of train that we're then going to try and stick with for the entire run, which is perhaps, I don't know, two wagons and six, six sorry, two, two locomotives and six wagons or three, lo four locomotives, eight wagons, whatever, whatever, any of that sort of stuff. We've gone for a pattern instead. So as you can see here, we've got a locomotive and two wagons. Now, if we wanted to make this train bigger because we needed to transport more processed fuel to wherever we're going and this one wasn't providing enough throughput, then we'd stick in another locomotive and another two wagons. And then <clears throat> if we wanted to go further than that, now we'd obviously would have to expand the station in order to do that. But we could then have it be with the one, two, one, two, one, two for as long as we want to make the train. So we can make the trains as big as we want. They'll always have the same acceleration and the same top speed because it'll be the same proportion of locomotives to to load um, so they'll all work quite well together but we have the option to make bigger trains to reduce the congestion a little bit when we decide we want to produce, we have a bit more throughput so it's going to be interesting to get, seeing how this works um, but I think it's got it's got potential um, whether it's going to work nicely I don't know but it's but it's certainly got potential um, and it's going to and if it doesn't work very nicely it's going to be Tristan's problem not mine because he's in charge of trains again <laughs> Currently, the train system isn't doing a great deal. So as you can see here, we've got a station that's loading up processed fuel, and that's being taken currently being taken up to here to be unloaded at this station, and then put and then used up here in what we've been referring to as the northern powerhouse, which is a, a new power generation area up to the north of the base. And the reason we've moved up here gets back to one of the other problems that I was talking about in the last video. Uh, a big we were aware at the end of the first stream that we had a serious iron problem. So down here, we ripped through the initial starting iron patch, which was somewhere in this sort of area. Now, conveniently, there was another iron patch quite close by, this one, that had about 800,000 iron, I think. Now, as you can see, we've now used more than half of that. So this is we are ripping through iron very, very quickly. And that's that's always the way in, in early game Factorio. You're building, building enormous numbers of belts and assembly machines and stuff like that. All of this takes huge amounts of iron. And then you start building steel and you start using up even more iron. So we got the... Um, we, 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 we've been using with been using this this will keep us going for at least a little while maybe one more one more stream is probably about the limit of it I guess but it'll it'll work for a little while but we knew it was going to be a serious problem quite soon so there were some scouting missions mostly done by Mike and I think a bit by Tristan as well they scouted at the end of the end of the first stream they scouted all the way around this lake and didn't find any iron then they sort of set off north at the beginning of stream two and they did and um, actually despite and this, all this area has been explored um, and we did find some iron in that actually so we've done quite well we found two two point two million there and three just over three million there so this is a good amount of iron this will keep us going for a, quite a long time we're, we're very happy with this um, but it's a bit of a distance away so We've, which is why we've now installed a train line system. Now, what we don't want to do, because it's just going to require multiple handling, we don't want to bring the iron ore in here and dump it into these into these smelting systems, because well, it's just going to it's going to be prolonging, putting off the inevitable slightly, because we are going to need to move these and expand them, because this is, this is quite a small area. We're using the the very very basic um, burner. Um, uh, 
stone furnaces. So this isn't going to be good for the long term. So what we want to do is we're going to build in an iron smelter. Or maybe this is going to be an iron smeltery. Maybe it's going to be a general smeltery. We shall see. But this is certainly going to be a smeltery area. Um, so we've got a station here for dropping off the iron ore. Then we're going to have a big smelting area above here. And then <clears throat> another station somewhere around here for picking up the iron plates. And probably steel plates as well because there's no point in smelting them in different places. But that means we're also going to need to bring in wood, we're going to need to bring in coal, and we are already bringing in, this This is probably a, almost certainly a processed fuel drop-off station, which is being fed in here for refuelling. And that brings me on to the next thing to talk about, which is refuelling. So, one of the advantages of using LTN is that you have a central depot system that all the trains always go to, and they can refuel there, while, and it's somewhere where they wait as well. So it works quite nicely for that. However, there are a couple of problems with that. Um, the main one being... Uh, that the, the, the being that your trains end up do, having to do every every journey is a three station journey, which is very very wasteful. Because imagine imagine you want to, if you want to go and get um, if you want to go and get iron ore and deliver it for smel for smelting, you'd have to, you go from here up to here down to here and then down to here now that's not too bad but imagine it was copper smelting and the copper smelting was over here or something then you'd end up going up to, to a copper patch wherever it is to the smelting patch at the back and then down to the depot wherever wherever it is and so you've got a lot of wasted travel time in there and it also means some extra time when you when you order something the train has to go all the way from the depot to the pickup station before it actually gets the gets the resources and starts doing what you want so the way the system should work is that there will be a, um, a train parked in every station that's a drop-off station so in the case of this one the sol this processed fuel there should be a train parked here that is unloading into these chests and keeping the chests full so the chest will be will be eventually you'll get to the steady state the chests are full there's a bit of processed fuel left in the train it gradually unloads into into the into these chests as the uh, as it gets used up and then once it's all used up the train the, well, sorry, once the train is empty the train will head off to get to come down here where it'll get to this station where there'll be plenty of solid fuel, pro process fuel and some much much faster inserters than these the yellow ones are dreadful um, but there'll be much there'll be plenty of solid fuel here, process fuel here so it'll fill up with the processed fuel very very quickly then the train will head up back here so there's always in theory there is always going to be basically mo mostly full chests as buffer and then most of the time there'll be a train with providing additional buffer it means a bit more resources are tied up in the stations than in uh, than with an LTN setup, but it means as but it means you're, you you tend to have much more uptime on your then downstream system. So with the iron ore, for example, this there'll be a train parked here as there is at the moment. This is this, this train here. Let's in fact, let's go and have a look at it. One of the other things we've developed is the. Um, grappling hook gun which I was aware of as a thing from playing space exploration where it's a recommended mod but I've never used it very much because by the time I got to space which is where they said you needed it I found that it's not really that important anyway so yes here this train will unload the iron ore into these into these uh, chests and then once it's finished it needs to know it, it will then go to an iron mine it will go to any iron mine it doesn't care which one any of them that's open and then it will fill up completely then it will come back down here so that means you've always got in theory, these these chests will be mostly full, and the and this train will be here most of the time and have a decent amount of fuel in it, a decent amount of iron ore in it. So you'll always have plenty of it available to pass through the system. So I'm cautiously optimistic that this system will will work a bit more effectively than LTN. However, it is going to be quite a lot more complicated to set up. So LTN makes things easier. This makes them a bit more efficient. Now the other the, the downside, as I said, is you need to worry about fueling. So what we plan to do is have fueling in the smelting area because then we don't need to have fueling up in the mines because the trains go up there they'll fill up with fuel they'll fill up with the ore bring it back unload it and when they're down here they can be refueled we'll also have fueling areas in the in the in the uh, drop central drop off for the um, for the main bus so in theory if take let's take let's take um, green circuits for an, as an example now in vanilla um, you require iron plates copper plates and you output green circuits now the iron and the copper plates will come from the smeltery, so the trains that bring those in can be refueled there. And the green plates will probably go to the um, will go to your bus, so the trains that, so those trains can be refueled there. Which means you don't need to worry about having any refueling in your green circuit factory. You can just keep it in the central areas where where nearly all the trains go. Now in Crastorio, we're going to find this is a bit more complicated because there's going to be a lot more places that trains go, I suspect. Um, but the basic theory stands that we'll have. That we can keep um, the, the the that will keep the set refueling to as fewer places and as centralised as possible, which just means we don't need to then worry about having these additional stations that sort of thing. So hopefully that'll help quite a bit. 
The other advantage that this system has over um, over LTN is that because you don't have the depots, you don't have those areas that are bottlenecks. Because in LTN, you tend to find that you get if you're not careful, you get a bit of bottlenecking around the depots because there are so many trains trying to go through that area all the time. Now you can fix that to an extent by having multiple depots spread out, and that also helps with the problem I was talking about earlier with the trains having to travel extremely long distances. Um, but it's it, it, it sort of solves both of those in, in a slightly different way. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the lack of LTN treats us. <laughs> uh. Finally, on the railway front, we've got this station here, which is, is eventually going to be an iron plate drop-off station. And that's hooked up, as you can see, down, down here into the main bus. So once this runs out, we'll have the iron being fed in here. We're going to need quite a few more of these these um, sets of belts coming in, but that's not going to be too much of a problem because I imagine we're certainly going to eliminate all of this area down here. So this could be moved; it has to be, or we might reckon that actually we'll just make the glass somewhere else. We'll 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 see how it goes. Um, that might be another sort of smelting area thing. So we'll make. Um, but in general, we can move a lot of this stuff off elsewhere and. Um, and, and make a bit more space to bring the bring these belts in so we can have we can have a massive station here for all of the drop-offs and so on and get it hopefully we'll have um cliff explosives fairly soon and we'll be able to use those to get rid of all of these um these cliffs that are going to be in the way of the uh, of the drop-off stations uh the joys of early game factorio eh? but those things are going to be those um cliff explosives <coughs> are going to be gated behind in fact i think we, we have researched them uh let's have a look in fnei uh, for cliff explosives so to make cliff explosives, you need an empty barrel, which we haven't made yet, but that's just steel, which we now have, so we can make the barrels. You need explosives, which need coal and sulfur and water, so we need to make sulfur, which means we need petroleum, which means we need crude oil, which means we need to go out, dig up some crude oil, or perhaps get core fragment processing running. We'll see, we'll see if that's enough. Uh, also going to need grenades, but that's just coal and iron. So yeah, we, we've got a bit of work to do to get the cliff explosives, but it's all... Basically, we need to get, we need to get oil processing up and running in order to get that one going. So... Yeah, stuff to do there. <laughs> the other big thing we've done is expanding the um, the these uh, arboretums. I've just gone dark again. There we go. Is the the greenhouses that are growing trees. So we've been playing around with the numbers a bit and trying to decide whether it's worth. Basically, if there's is there a way to use lots of greenhouses to produce self-powered systems where you grow wood, you pass it over to furnaces, you burn the wood and turn that into the power to keep the greenhouses going. And if so, does that, firstly, does it produce more power than it uses up? And secondly, does it use up, does it pull in more pollution than it generates? And I'm pretty sure we've decided that it's, it's almost a wash, it's not really worth the hassle, and we might as well just burn coal and try and deal with pollution in other ways. We did quite a lot of experimentation up here. So we've got the um, around the northern powerhouse and the mining areas. We have the we have another another load of greenhouses, and they are being sort of effective. They are keeping the they're stopping the pollution going off this way, but the pollution is still flowing off this way because we've got this big dirty power station down here. Now we do have, there is the question: what if we'd surrounded the power station with um, greenhouses? And maybe the best way to do it would be to have Eat for each, so each chunk ha manages its pollution independently. So you can see here, there's this, this, there's a chunk there. These are appearing and disappearing as they get as they get used up by the greenhouses and, by, and the pollution gets cleaned by the trees in here, which does admittedly slowly kill them, but it does also use the pollution up. So the question is, if we put say one of these systems, a boiler and two steam engines and a um, and a, uh, and and a greenhouse in a in a chunk together and just left them as a little self-contained unit, what would happen? Would they produce more power than they use? Would they um, would they produce more pollution than they clean? I think we decide we did the numbers, and I'm pretty sure we decided that you'd get a tiny bit more power out than you were actually using up, but you'd also get a bit more pollution out. That said, I think it would be an interesting an interesting layout to try, but I'm also fairly convinced it wouldn't be worth the time and effort put into making it. So I think we probably won't do that. But this was an interesting experiment. So, instead of defending against the um, pollution, we're probably going to end up starting to defend against the biters. We've been doing quite well at uh, proactive defence so far. So, what, by which I mean, for this, this is actually a pollution cloud down here. We've gone out, we've eliminated all of the biter nests that are inside it, and most of the ones that are just outside it as well. So you can see it's it's all down here has all been all been um, sanitised, made safe, and so on. Uh, we've had a couple of little expansions and a couple of attacks, but basically it's working quite well. And that means, despite all of the expansion we've done, we're still only we've still only got relatively early game biters. Um, so we've got small biters here. We've got we do have medium worms. We've got onto. Um, I think we've seen a couple of medium biters, but basically things are 
we're doing quite well at keeping things safe. This 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 one's a bit of a bit bit a bit of a worry. But I think there's only so long we're going to be able to keep, keep that up. So at the end of the last stream, I went out here. I built up this wall, and this is quite this this will it's it's an undefended wall, so it is just literally a stone wall. But it does mean that if any biters try to get through, we'll get an early warning because we'll get da attacks and damage and then it's destruction on the wall. They'll say, hey, there's something happening down here, and then we can come running down here to investigate before the biters come up and start chewing on things up here that we actually care about. So I think this is this is quite a good way of sort of keeping the biters keep it giving us an early warning system but we are going to go out and put in some extra some turrets along here so the wall can take care of itself and then we're also going to put a wall across here as well to, to, to get make this area safe and then take out all of these nests as well we're kind of hoping that this bit and we haven't explored yet over here is going to be sort of a bit a bit of a sort of a norfolk shape the the back of britain where it just curves round like that and joins on and there isn't going to be a land bridge going off to goodness knows how many more biters off this way but if it is it's going to be a bit of a choke point anyway so we can probably close that off without too much difficulty um but we are we want we want to keep biter attacks to a minimum as much as we can because it's a Having, having to defend against enormous quantities of biter attacks is just such a drain on your iron supply um, because you have to keep making ammunition or your energy supply if you want to get onto lasers that we'd rather just we'd rather preempt it as much as we can and Mike is quite is definitely a big fan of doing that so he spends spend, he spends a certain amount of time going out with his with slow down capsules and, and rifles and lots of ammunition and dealing with the biters so he's, he's doing very well at keeping the biters um, at least a little bit at bay we are then also will want to put in a wall across here. Uh, we'll need to do something in here because this is a um, there is a way through here, and then maybe across here. And goodness knows what we're going to do across the top. Maybe just straight across there because we're getting the, we're now. I mean, some of these these are lovely small choke points. This one's pretty good. This one's okay. This is rather a long wall that we're going to have to build if we do this one. So it's, we'd rather not if we can avoid it, but I think we're going to have to. Um, unless we the the alternatives are sort of require huge amounts more exploration finding and going out just in desperate hope that we'll find more choke points and we probably won't we'll probably just find lots and lots of fighting to do which is going to be um which is not ideal should we say the interesting thing with the uh the, the going out and hunting for iron is we found yes we found two small patch well two two quite good patches of iron but we had to go quite a long way for them in that time we found one two three four five six seven eight at least eight patches of rare metal me, rare metals and they're all decent a lot of them are decent sizes as well so i'm feeling starting to feel that calling them rare metals is a bit of a misnomer <laughs> we shall see we shall see though maybe we'll start to require them in such quantities that they do feel rare we're also a bit short of coal so there are a couple of patches around he says trying to find them there's one there two two and a half million there so we, we can probably get that one without too much difficulty especially when once we've done the expansion i've been talking about there's another one down here which is five million but that's a bit out of the way maybe we'll build uh, a rail maybe, maybe, and i think there's there some more a little bit of iron over here i thought i found oh yeah some coal down here as well so maybe what we'll do is bridge across here have our railway system come through the old smelting area uh, maybe re or maybe remove the greenhouses have a land bridge across here for the trains to take another one across here and then defend this area uh, not worry about this one so much and then we can get this coal patch potentially this coal patch and then there's the one up here that's a bit more accessible and easier to get well we shall see with the wonder of trains is that it kind of doesn't matter how far away a resource patch is as long as you can make a safe route out to it and and defend the mine then the trains will happily beetle back and forth along it Mark and Mike are most most of the uh, the ones who who built who did most of the construction up here, so I should give them credit for that building up the uh, the mines up here. Mark has also been down here improving improving my um, steel system here, as I said at the beginning, and also make, putting in the iron brick uh, iron brick stone brick production and expanding stone stone production here as well because all of this was a, it was it was struggling a little bit because we're building there's so many things that come from stone in this game. You've got um, glass you've got landfill you've got stone bricks and then all of the, a lot of the buildings require stone bricks in order to build them rail requires lots of stone there's a lot of just yeah stone is in, in fairly high demand when you're trying to expand so there's been quite a lot of it used up there mark was also um helpful in the in the um it's pushing out of the biters as you can tell by the fact he's got a gravestone here halfway up and then another two up here plus one for uh, plus one for mike so they're doing um they're doing quite well at uh, expanding out, but, but it, they are taking some losses in the, in the, in the process. <laughs> and that brings the grand total up to three deaths for Mark and two to Mike. Every single one of those was due to worms, so they would just be getting spat up by the worms and having their uh, health gradually acidited away. And that's despite us having the, um, the wonderful sniper rifles that uh, have... 
that have such a lot glorious long range but sometimes you want to, you really want to get in and take out the nests rather than the worms because the nests are the ones that keep sending the biters at you uh, but you know you do what you can so that brings me to the end of the video that's everything we've been up to in the next episode as I, as I say we should be trying to put in some defenses we'll probably be thinking about trying to put, get in an external copper supply we'll be but there's a smelting area down here to expand as well. Getting the train system up and running on a, be on a better, better level is also going to be another major thing. But I think defence is first, and then probably iron smelting. And we shall see how things go from there on. Maybe we'll have red. Maybe we'll do red circuits. Maybe we'll do blue science. Maybe we'll do blue and grey science. Who knows? But there's there's quite there's still quite a lot of stuff to do before we can start thinking about launching rockets. Even with the space exploration 0.6 moving the rocket launches a bit closer. So make sure you come along on uh, Monday evening at uh, 7:30 UK time to to watch the stream. See how we're getting on with that. As I say, there'll be plenty of plenty of. Um, plenty of effort in that and plenty of uh, plenty of expansion and lots of probably lots of dying because we're doing we're doing combatty things we shall see Def definitely come along to, to join the stream though it'll be it'll be it'll be well worth watching then I'm doing I've started playing Dyson Sphere program as well so there'll be a video about that tomorrow and then the uh, next stream of that will be on Wednesday again at 7:30 so that's another good one to come along and see Dyson Sphere program I'm finding it a lot like Factorio but there are some funny differences that are just it's taking a I'd say that the hardest part is just getting my head around a slightly different control system. Um, other than that, I'm able to sort of more or less approach it in a in a fairly factorio-y way so far. I and mean, granted, I've not got that far. I'm still on my first planet. I've got I've made iron, I've made steel, and so on. But watch tomorrow's video to see a bit more detail on that. And um, and yeah, come along to the stream as I say. And well, there's always well, there's often videos coming out on Fridays as well. We'll see what we'll see what I can squeeze out this week. So don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and come along to all the rest of the stuff on the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.